All right, guys. Uh, welcome back. Uh, does anybody have any questions about the homework or the quiz that was from last time? Can you spell the 2C? 2C? Yeah. So let me draw it. So let me see. I guess we'll just call it V1 and V2. So I just said to find the voltages and the currents, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So I guess what probably tripped people up was this resistor. Um, but basically, the, the current divider equation works as long as you know the current flowing into the split, right? Well, regardless of this resistor, um, we still know that 4 milliamps flows into that split, right? So if I want to go ahead and find the currents through each of these, I could use the current divider equation, but I assume that if you use it, you're going to get 2 milliamps, 2 milliamps, right? Because they're, the resistors are equal. So you'll get 2 milliamps flowing here, 2 milliamps flowing here. So current constant here. That's right. That's right. So if you have one... It, you know, one branch of wire. It doesn't matter how many components I put in that one line, as long as they're in series, they're going to have the same current flowing through them. And that's the same, that, the same goes for voltage with parallel things. So things that you connect in parallel, you can connect as many as you want. It doesn't matter if they're, if they're connected to the same two nodes down that like ladder of parallel devices, the voltage across all of them will be the same. So um, basically, 2 milliamps times 1K in either case is going to give me 2 volts here, right? And then you have 4 milliamps flowing through this 1 volt or through this 1K, which means my drop across it is 4 volts, and then this voltage is 6 volts. Are there any questions? Um, anybody have any questions about any other problems from the homework? Any of these? All everything's good. How about the quiz? Good. Did you go over that? The quiz? Yeah. 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 I noticed a couple people tried using current divider and things like that. It was basically the problem from your homework, uh, but flipped. So here's the quiz. Let me draw it. Change colors. Yeah. All right. 3K, 4K, and 12 volts. VY, VS, and VX. All right, so uh, I guess uh, either side that you want to solve first would have been fine. Um, there's a couple different ways you could do this. Um, you could notice that this this configuration right here is a voltage divider, and that would give you Vx immediately if you use the equation. Or what a lot of people did was combine these in series, find the current, and then find the voltage that way. Um, do you have a preference? No? OK, so if I just want to, I, I guess there were some currents I asked for too, so let me make sure. Let me see which ones I asked for. So this one, I1, and this one, I2. All right, so let me switch colors. 
So basically, first thing I would do is I know that this VS is 12 volts, right? That's that's kind of a given. And then I would solve this side of the circuit first just because I know it's a voltage divider. So I would say VX is equal to VS times 3K over 4K plus 3K. And that would be VX basically equals uh, 12 volts times, this is going to give me 3 over 7, right? And that's going to be, I don't know, let's see. 12 times 3 over 7 gives me 5.14 volts. Does that sound right to everybody? They got it? So now I've got VX, I've got VS, and now since I have the uh, voltage on either side of the 4K, I can find the current, right? I could say I1 is 12 volts minus 5.14 volts over 4K. And that's going to give me 12 minus 5.14 divided by 4,000. 1.71 milliamps. I think a lot. I think that sounds right. 1.71 milliamps. Another thing you could have done uh, was you could have just said 5.14 over 3K, right? Because that's the voltage difference across this resistor, and it's the same current. So if I go 5.14 over 3K, that should give me the exact same answer. And you see 1.71 milliamps also. So now we've got I1, we've got VX, and we've got VS. So I need to solve this side of the circuit. Um, basically, uh, these three Ks are in parallel. Um, you could do, you know, one over three K plus one over three K plus one over three K equals one over REQ. Uh, or you could use, you know, solving two of them in parallel, get that equivalent, and then whatever you want to do. However you do it, our equivalent is going to come out to 1K because uh, when you have basically, say you have two, two of the same resistors in parallel, it divides them in half. If you have three of the same resistors in parallel, it divides them by three. So I did 3K, so it was really easy and it comes out to 1K. And in that case, if this is 1K and this is 1K, then this side of the circuit also forms a voltage divider where the voltage gets halved. So this is going to be 6 volts. Um, if I do that... Uh, if I do that voltage divider, you'll see it comes out to basically Vy is 12 volts times uh, 1K over 1K plus 1K, right? So it's going to be half. So it gives me 6 volts. And then lastly, I need to find I2. So I know the voltage on this side of the resistor, this side of the resistor, 6 minus 0 over 1K gives me 6 milliamps. So I2, 6 volts minus 0 volts, that gives me 6 milliamps. So that's, I didn't box everything, sorry. Vy equals 6 volts, Vs equals 12, and Vx. Is that fine? Anybody have questions about anything I did there? All right, so it sounds like the quiz and the homework are good. So we're going to get into some new stuff today. Um, so basically up to this point, we've seen mostly one loop circuits. We're starting to get into some two loop circuits, but still don't require any further analysis uh, than just what we've learned with KCL, KVL. Um, what we're going to learn today is a method for solving circuits that have multiple uh, power sources. So basically, uh, these circuits that have more than one voltage source or a voltage source and a current source both um, and the method's called superposition, so let me just write that out. Superposition. All right, so I guess uh, the best thing to do would be to just start with an example. Um, I don't want to take one from my homework. Actually, you know what? I'll take one that's similar and just change it a little. So let me do A, but I'll switch up the values. So let's say this is 3, 1K, 
2K, 1K, and then let's call this 4 volts. Alright, so back to the camera. So if I wanted to solve this circuit, uh, basically, I know this is 4 volts, right? And I know this is 3 volts right off the bat, but I don't know this middle voltage. And if I wanted to find this middle voltage, uh, there's not really a whole lot I could do with what we've learned so far. Because when you have these circuits that have several uh, power sources, each power source contributes something to the circuit. So this voltage here is 4 volts because this battery is tied directly between you know this node and ground however uh, this this voltage source is also contributing power to the circuit so the current flowing through this resistor isn't just dependent on this voltage and ground it's also dependent on this other voltage and ground so what superposition is is it's a way to find uh, voltages and currents in your circuit basically uh, when there's more than one power source contributing to the circuit so, like I said, let's see if I asked you what is Vx in this circuit. I think that that's probably similar to what I asked on the homework. Yeah, I'm just asking for Va and Vb, that middle voltage. And at first it looks like it might be easy, but given what we have done so far, that problem can't be solved. You need to use superposition or some other ma methods that we'll get into next time. Um, but I'm going to show superposition today. So let's go here. And we know, like I said, we know that this is 3 volts. We know that this is 4 volts, but we don't know Vx, right? So we want to find Vx. So what we're going to do is basically we're going to solve the circuit as if only the 3 volt source was there, and we're going to get rid of the 4 volt source, and then we're going to solve the circuit a second time as if only the 4 volt source was there, and then we're going to add those two values, and the sum of those two values is basically what Vx is, okay? So first, uh, let me go ahead and... Uh, get rid of the 4 volt source and when so there's two different types of things that you you're gonna have to do in superposition circuits when you're getting rid of a voltage source you short across the voltage source and a, a short across the voltage source means you literally tie this node to this node basically getting rid of the 4 volt drop across that node initially there was a 4 volt battery there now this node is directly tied to this node which means they have the same voltage so the source is basically gone so when you do voltage sources, you short across the voltage source to get rid of it. Okay, so first we're getting rid of the 4 volt source. So if I were to draw this equivalent circuit now without that voltage source, what it would look like is basically a 1K, a 2K, I have another 1K, but then I have a short to ground, right? That, that, is, that, that whole node is now connected to ground. So I can just connect it down just like this. So this is 3 volts. This node right here is still Vx, but we're going to call it Vx1, because basically what I'm going to find with superposition is that my Vx, my original Vx, is going to be this Vx1 plus whatever I solve when I get rid of the 3 volt source later, right? So first let's solve for Vx1. We notice uh, 1K and 2K are in parallel, right? So we can combine those. So let me go ahead and do that. 1K times 2 over 1 plus 2 gives me basically 0.667k so if I were to redraw the circuit now I have a 1k I have Vx1 and now the parallel combination of those gave me 0.667k so now all I have left is a voltage divider and I can you know find Vx1 really easily with my voltage divider equation so Vx1 is going to be equal to 3 volts times 0.667k divided by 1k plus 0.667k, right? Now let me solve that real quick. plus. 667 so I get 400 
times 3 volts gives me 1.2 volts. Is that right? Anybody, anybody got 1.2 volts? Anybody doing it with me? Otherwise I can, you got 1.2 volts? Okay. So VX1 in this case is 1.2 volts. So we're not done, obviously. We found the contribution from the 3 volt source, basically. That's, we, that's what we did. We found the amount of voltage contributed to that node by this source. Okay? So now what we have to do is we have to find the amount of voltage contributed by the other source. So let me switch colors. Also, let me just write out the equation. We're going to say Vx, my total Vx is going to be equal to Vx1 plus Vx2, right? So I already have Vx1, now I need to find Vx2. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change colors. And now I'm going to get rid of my 3 volt source, right? So what I say, I'm going to short across the battery. So now this node is connected to ground. This is a to totally different circuit now, right? We're not, this is not the same anymore. Now we have the 4 volt source and this other node is shorted to ground. So I got 1K. I've got 2K, 1K, and now I've got my 4 volt source. That's ground, that's ground. And so you'll notice that the 1K and the 2K again are in parallel, right? So I can combine those. I get, I'm going to get 0.67K. I don't really want to draw it again. So let me just call this VX2. And we're basically following the same process. I'm going to have to do the voltage divider, but now with the 4 volt, right? So VX2 is going to be equal to my 4 volt times, again, 0.667K divided by 1k plus 0.667k and then let me calculate that 667 divided by 1.6 times 4 and I get 1.6 volts. Anybody get that? Yep. Alright, so 1.6 volts. Okay, so I've got my VX2, I've got my VX1, so now I can solve for VX in the original circuit, right? All this was to find this voltage in the original circuit. These two circuits are not, you know, they're not their own thing. They're parts of this circuit that you use to solve the superposition problem. So VX, in this case, is equal to my 1.2 volts plus my 1.6 volts, and that gives me 2.8 volts. And so now... I can go back over to the original circuit and that is this voltage right here. And so now I have 3 volts here, 2.8 there, I've got 4 here, and I can solve for all the currents because I have all the voltages, right? So just to clarify that that was done properly, let me go to SPICE, run it over here. Just want to make sure that, yeah. Yeah. You said that, like, shorts, right? okay. Yeah. So if you were working with a circuit that looked like this and you wanted to know the voltage Vx, you would never do any math. You would just use a multimeter. Right. Okay. You would go and in this circuit, you would connect your multimeter's plus terminal to this Vx and the minus terminal to ground, and that would tell you the voltage there. Yeah. Well, just I was saying, could you use it as like the green bars as well to like find the two voltages and add them together? Uh. Well, the thing is. This is just a method for solving for that voltage. That 1.2 volts and that 1.6 volts aren't going to be found anywhere in the circuit. Oh, okay. That's just mathematically, it works out that those two sources contribute that much voltage to the actual voltage. Oh, but okay. if you had this circuit and you were probing around with your multimeter, you're never going to see a 1.6 or a 1.2. You're going to see a 3 here, a 2.8 there, and a 4 there. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Like if you build this circuit, like, and you got rid of this other source, and then you found this VX2, like, it, it'll be 1.6 volts, but in this circuit, you're never going to find that. It's just a piece of this voltage. Does that make sense? Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So let's go back here. Let me build this real quick. All right. Anybody have any problems with spice? No. Good. 
1K, 2K, oh, 1K, 4 volts, and 3 volts. And yeah, so when you guys are doing these in SPICE, I don't want you creating all these equivalent circuits in SPICE. Just run the original circuit and make sure your voltage that you calculated is right, right? Um, there's no need to do like the equivalence and show that, you know, by now I assume you know how to do a voltage divider, so I don't need you to prove that you could do the voltage divider properly. I just need you to show that you did superposition properly and got this voltage properly. So I call this VX, right? Uh, I'll call this V right, I guess, V right and V left. Uh, okay, dot OP, and what did I calculate? 2.8 volts? Mm -hmm. All right, so that should be right, and there it is. So yeah, that's proof that superposition works, and then if you wanted to, of course, find the currents. Uh, let's go back to the camera. So say I want to find the current flowing through the 2K resistor, for example. This current flowing through the 2K resistor. So this is this is an example, right? I think I talked a couple times uh, previously about you know if you have a single loop circuit, the current in the loop is always going to be the same, right? Well, when you get into these circuits that have several loops, that's not the case, right? The current flowing through this 1K is not going to be the current flowing through this 2K because you have currents flowing in both loops and they both get poured into this 2K. KCL will still hold true, so if I take that current and that current, I can sum those and I'm going to get this current. It, it, the KCL is not going to go away, but this isn't just one loop anymore because it's connected to this other loop. So you're getting current contributions from the 3 volt, you're getting current contributions from the 4 volt, so you kind of, uh, you need to find the voltages first basically to, in order to find the currents. So if you find this VX, you know you have 2.8 volts on one side of this resistor. You know you have ground on the other side of the resistor. So I can find this current, we'll call it I1, through the 2K by going I1 equals uh, basically 2.8 volts minus 0 volts divided by 2K, right? So that would give me 1.4 milliamps. So that's the total current flowing through the 2K. But that doesn't tell me the current flowing through this 1K, and it doesn't tell me the current flowing through this 1K. If I want to find those currents, I have to do Ohm's Law again, where I would go 4 minus 2.8 divided by this 1K, and then 3 minus 2.8 divided by this 1K, right? Like that, that's how you would find the currents. Typically, you want to find the voltages first. You find all your voltages. Once you have all your voltages, you can find all your currents. So in general, from this point forward, when you're doing superposition, you're going to be finding voltages and then you use the voltages to find the currents. What we're going to discuss next time and in the future is called mesh analysis. In mesh analysis, you're going to find the currents first and you use the currents to find the voltages. So just keep those things uh, in mind. When you're, when you're using this, this method, uh, you're finding voltages and then currents, and then the other method that we're going to discuss next time, currents, then voltages. Um, so I just went over all this. Are there any questions about anything uh, that you see here? Uh, if not, I'm going to do another example with current sources. Yeah. Uh, it has something to do with superimposing the one voltage on the other, I think. Does that make sense? <laughs> uh, we can look it up. Let's see. Superposition theorem is one of those strokes of genius that takes a complex subject and simplifies it in a way that makes perfect sense. Nice. Uh, yeah, I don't see anything that says why is it called. See, it says something about superimposing. So I guess that's why. Superimposing these values of voltage and current. I don't know. I'm not an English major. <laughs> No, you can ask questions, <laughs> just not about ma uh, w big words. Uh, yeah, sorry. I'm sure it's out there somewhere. I just don't want to spend class time looking for it. Uh, any other questions about any, like, any of the techniques here? All right, I'll do another example uh, with a voltage and a current source. So let's go back to the camera, and I'll get a new page. Because 
like I said, with voltage sources, you're going to short across the voltage source. With currents, you're going to do something different. So that's why I want to show another example where I use a current source. All right, so let's go with a new page. All right. So let's say I had a circuit where I've got a current source. and a voltage source. Say this is two volts, uh, I don't know, one milliamp, two K, three K, four K, how about that? And so we want to find all the voltages and currents in this circuit. So we don't know this voltage. We do know this voltage. Uh, we definitely don't know this voltage, but what we can do is we can use superposition to find this voltage. So what I first want to do is label this voltage, we'll call it Vx again. So I'll call this example 2, just so that we can distinguish it from the other one. So this is a different circuit. Alright, so again, we have two power sources here. We have a current source and we have a voltage source, and we basically want to find Vx. Um, we don't have any good way of doing that. We could see, you know, you might say, okay, so you can find the drop across this resistor, right? One milliamp times two K will give me the drop, but I don't know this voltage either, so I can't, I can't really do anything with it, right? So what I need is superposition. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to solve the circuit as if only the two volt source was there, and then I'm going to solve the circuit as if only the one milliamp current source was there, and then I'm going to add those voltages and I'm going to get my VX. So again, uh, VX is going to be equal to VX one plus VX two. So just like last time, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to short across this battery. So I'm getting rid of the voltage source, basically, and I'm going to draw some equivalent circuit with a 1 milliamp, 2K, a 3K, oh, that doesn't really look like a resistor, whatever, and then a 4K. And you might recognize this from the homework, this equivalent circuit. So basically, is everybody okay with me? I shorted across this battery. That's obviously connected to ground since this is now gone. And this is the equivalent circuit. That's fine with everybody? All right. So now uh, this node between the 2K, 3K, and 4K is here. So that's going to be my VX1 that I'm going to solve for. And so now doing exactly what we did um, with the previous, with the homework, basically, that homework two, what was it, homework four, problem 2C, you're going to use a current divider uh, to find, or you know, you don't have to, you can combine them in parallel if you'd like. Uh, that might actually be easier, so let's do that. So if you want, you could go one milliamp, 2K, my VX one's here, and then whatever 3K in parallel with 4K is. 3 times 4 divided by 3 plus 4 1.71k, is that right? 1.71k, and now my VX1 is going to be 1 milliamp times 1.71k or 1.71 volts, right? All right, so I've got VX1. That's my contribution from the current source without the voltage source. So I got this. Now I want to find VX2, which means I need to find the contribution from the voltage source without the current source. This is where we're going to learn something new. Uh, it might seem weird at first. It was weird when I first learned it, so just buckle up. So I'm going to redraw the circuit where I only have the voltage source. I don't have the current source. So 2K, 3K. 4K, 2 volts, and now I'm not going to short this node to ground, and here's why. When we're getting rid of a voltage source, we want to pretend that there's no voltage source there, and when there's no voltage source there, that means there's no voltage drop between the two nodes, right? So we, we create a short because the short 
basically represents zero voltage, right? There's no, if you have the same wire, there's no difference in voltage on that wire. So we represent the replacement of the voltage source with a short circuit. That's called a short circuit. With a current source, what we want to do is we don't want current flowing through that node because we want to pretend that there's no current source there. And to do so, we have to open the circuit. And an open circuit would look like that. Basically, we took the source out, and now there's a break in the circuit, so no current can flow here. Right? That's called an open. Okay? So in this circuit now, I have this 2K resistor out here that's kind of floating. It's not connected to anything. No current can flow this way. There's absolutely no path for that current to flow. So basically, that 2K resistor is also gone. It's still there. This, this tripped me up when I first learned this stuff, so I want to make it very clear to you guys. This 2K resistor is still there, but no current can flow through it, so it may as well not be there because it's, it's not, this is not a valid path for current. It's open, so this 2K can basically go away too, and we're just left with this part of the circuit. So that's my VX2. This is just a voltage divider where I'm going to go uh, VX2 is equal to 2 volts times 3k over 4k plus 3k, which is 7k. So 2 times 3 over 7 gives me 0.857 volts. Anybody get that? That's my VX2. Okay. And so then my total uh, VX is the sum of these. So VX equals VX1 plus VX2 or 1.71 volts plus 0 0.857 volts. Let's calculate it. Oops. Uh, 2.567 volts. Anybody get that? Yeah. Vx equals 2.567 volts. All right. Any questions about that? Everybody understands that when I get rid of a voltage source, I short the circuit to basically give zero voltage between those two nodes. If I get rid of a current source, I open the circuit to assure that there's no current flowing. And then if there's a series device or resistor connected in that branch, it may as well not be there because it doesn't, it doesn't contribute anything to the circuit now that no current can flow through it, right? No current flows through it. As a result, no voltage is dropped across it, so it may as well not be there, okay? Why is this so crappy looking? Oh, I guess it only looks crappy on my screen. All right, um, let me go ahead and run this in Spice just to clarify that I did it right. Verify, not clarify. And this is going to be one milliamp, two volts, two K, three K, and four K. So what I calculate, 2.567. 2.57, close enough. <coughs> All right. Everybody good with that? All right, let me... Um, so this can work for as many sources as you might have. Um, if you have, I've just solved a couple of example problems with two voltage, or two sources basically. Um, this can work if you have three, four sources. Obviously, that's a little ridiculous. Um, but if you wanted to do it in that case, um, say you have a voltage source and two current sources, or two voltage sources and a current source, you do the exact same thing where you want to solve each one individually. So in, in a case where there were three sources, you would solve for the first source and get rid of the other two. And then you would solve for the second source and get rid of the other two. And then the third source and get rid of the other two. And then you sum all three of those and that will give you the voltage. To clarify, this doesn't work for currents. So don't try using superposition to solve for a current. Um, use it to solve for voltages. Um, actually, you know what? It might work for currents. I've just never used it for currents. 
If I were you, I would just use voltages. I don't think it works for currents. I've never seen a problem where someone asked you to find the current using superposition, but it might work. That's something I'll have to look into. But you're not going to have to do that anyways because the homework doesn't ask you to do so. So basically, those are the two homework problems. I basically just solved both of them, but with different numbers. Um, let me see if there is anything else. Whoops. Superposition for circuits with two or more loops. All right, so let me uh, go ahead and do one more example with three sources just so that I can feel better about doing extra example problems. And then if we still have extra time, I will go ahead and start talking about mesh analysis, which is what I was going to cover next time. Um, but let me do go ahead and do one more example. If I added a third source. And superposition works exclusively if the, the sources are in, are in loops, right? Like they have to be in loops. They can't just be like uh, consecutively. Meaning, like if I had two voltage sources stacked on top of each other or something yeah. like that. Well, if you had so. So are you saying, like, say I had a circuit that looked something like this, like I had a voltage source and then another voltage source. You're saying something like that? Yeah. Well, if I had a two voltage sources that looked like that, say this was like a two volt and this was a two volt, and then whatever circuitry over here, it doesn't really make a difference what I have over there. Um, this is basically four volts, so this could be just replaced by a four volt battery. Like, you wouldn't need to use superposition to do yeah, something like that. The exactly, yeah. You, this goes up by two, so that internal node right there would have two volts and then you go up by another two and that would be four volts. So, so it would be only really necessary to Well basically it's only necessary if uh, you've got sources kind of throughout the circuit and you want to find some internal voltage and you can't you can't do so by just using KCL or KVL so you have to kind of break it down by each component right. that's contributing to that voltage. Yeah, because in, in, in our first example the two voltage sources are not Right. They're just kind of around. Right. They're not in parallel. They're, there's one over here and there's one over here. And they might appear to be in parallel, but they don't share two nodes. They only share this singular node. So technically, they're in series. Uh, you go four volts to drop, you go to zero, and then you go up another three. That's kind of like a series connection right there. But they're, I, I guess uh, your question is basically like, when are you going to use this? At, and it's just, you can, like I said, when we go f further into the class and I give exams and I'm going to tell you, you know, solve this by whatever method you choose. I actually think I made a homework like that already. Um, you can use superposition if you like it, or if you don't like it, you can use some other method. Um, I think Dr. Baker, when he gives his, like, exams, his first problem is, like, 10 circuits. It's, like, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, something like that. And he just tells you to solve them however you please, like whatever whatever method you prefer. And if you see a circuit, like uh, basically like today's quiz that I solved at the beginning, and you you know like that's a two loop circuit, but it doesn't have two sources, so you don't really need to um, you know use superposition. You can just use the methods that you learned before superposition that are easier and take less time. Right. Um, However, like on the first homework that I ever assigned, I think I gave, like we have like a circuit here with two sources, uh, but you wouldn't need to use superposition here because you already know that voltage and you already know that voltage without even having to use superposition. There would be no reason to use superposition here because they're both directly tied to, to nodes. So I guess more or less, um, you're going to go through the class and see a bunch of circuits that could be solved a bunch of different ways. Um, you may never really need to use superposition for a circuit, um, but you can choose to if you like that method. Okay. That makes sense? Yeah. Yeah, so I think this homework, yeah, so I just threw a couple circuits in here uh, and said basically use any method you choose. This is going to be after you've already learned superposition and mesh analysis. Um, so you, if you like mesh better, you can use that. If you like superposition better, you can use that. Uh, the downsides to superposition is that it's a lot of drawing equivalent circuits, which gets kind of tedious. The downside to mesh analysis is it's a lot of algebra, which gets kind of tedious. So you kind of just pick which, you know, the lesser of two evils. 
uh, whatever you prefer. If you like doing the algebra and you're not afraid to make little algebra mistakes, then that's fine. Is, is mesh analysis the, the, um, the, uh, like the multiple systems of equations? Yeah. Oh, okay. So will we use um, probably KBL, like in a bunch of different groups for that? Okay. Yeah, you know what? Does anybody feel like they need another example of superposition, or would you rather I just start on mesh? All right, cool. Superposition's pretty easy, right? All right, so I want this one, then this one, then this one. So I'll start talking about mesh. Your your next homework doesn't do mesh. I think it's all superposition. And then this fun circuit that you're going to have a fun time solving. It's really easy. It just looks annoying. It is annoying, but... It's not hard. And then the next homework, the one that's due on Valentine's Day, uh, uses mesh. So let me just create a quick circuit, uh, and I'll do an example of mesh analysis and teach you guys mesh. All right, so we just learned superposition. Now we're going to talk about mesh analysis. So these are both methods uh, that are exclusively used when you have more than one loop. They're not exclusively used when you have more than one source. They're exclusively used when you have more than one loop. Superposition obviously isn't going to work if you only have one source because the whole point is to add the contributions of the sources. But mesh analysis can be used even if you only have one source but you have several loops. Um, but you might find that pointless because it's better used when you have several sources. So let me, let me do, you know what, let's do another example, exactly what we already did, and then I'll just do it using mesh instead of superposition so we already know the answer. So this same problem, three volts, one K, two K, one K, and 4 volts. And 2K. All right, so we're going to use mesh analysis. So basically what mesh analysis does is it uses systems of equations to find the currents flowing in each loop. Okay? So what you're going to do first when, you, when you're solving a problem with mesh analysis is you're going to pick directions for the current to flow it doesn't matter. I, did anybody? Did, how many guys watched my uh, KVL video that I made? I made like, a quick KVL video on like it doesn't really matter what direction the current flows. Okay, so like very few of you. <laughs> That's kind of funny. You choose, and then if you get a negative answer, then it's just the other. One. Right. Basically, uh, say I define my current. So I'm going to define the currents. I know personally that the, this current's going to flow that way and this current's going to flow this way because of the way that the batteries are oriented, right? But if you don't choose them to, f to flow that way, it's going to work itself out because you're going to get a negative answer and then you're going to know that the current's flowing in the other direction, okay? But what you're going to do first is you're going to pick directions for the current to flow. So in this case, I picked this one to flow clockwise, this one to flow counterclockwise. I typically do that because I like when the currents come together through this 2K that they add together, right? I have them flowing in this way and then down together, so they add. If you have them flowing opposite directions, then they're going to subtract, and I, I don't like minus signs, so I just do it this way. But whatever you prefer is up to you. It doesn't matter what any of the voltages are right now. All that matters is you label the currents, so I'm going to call them I1 and then I2, right? And so this method uh, calls heavily upon KVL, Exactly. So what you're basically going to do is you're going to make a KVL uh, equation for each of the two loops. You're going to make a KVL for the loop with I1 flowing, and you're going to make a KVL for the loop with I2 flowing. And what you're going to end up with is two equations, two unknowns, and you solve, and then you get the two currents, and now you can find all the voltages. Right? So let's do that. So if I wanted to make a KVL for this left side loop right here, what I said basically is you have to dis you have to determine um, whether the voltage is dropping or going up when you go across some device or when you go from one node to the next. So and that's going to tell you basically when you write the equation whether you add or you subtract that term. Okay. 
So what I like to do is write the pluses and minuses of the direction that the current's flowing because it makes it easier for me to see. Um, basically, what I'm, when I write the plus and minus, I'm saying this voltage is higher than this voltage, so I already know that that's a, that's a voltage drop, right? The battery does it for me, right? I have a minus and a plus, so I already know I'm going up voltage. And it, it, it matters the direction that your, your loop is traveling. So I'm traveling clockwise, so I'm going to start down here, and I'm going to go across the battery. I go up by 3 volts, so I write a positive 3 volts. This is my first equation. Now I go across this 1K resistor, and the voltage drop across that resistor is I1 times 1K, right? Everyone agree? So I'm going to subtract that because it's a voltage drop. So minus I1 times 1K. Now I have this last term through the 2K resistor. And what I have is I don't just have I1 flowing through the 2K. I also have I2 flowing through the 2K. So this is where mesh analysis gets a little bit different uh, using KVL. I have, not only do I have I1, I also have I2 flowing through the 2K. So the sum of those two currents, right? This is I1 by itself flowing through that 1K. This is I2 by itself flowing through this 1K. But through this 2K, I have both of them flowing because of KCL. So what I'm going to write is minus, because I know that I drop voltage here, the sum of those two currents times 2K. And then that loop is done. So I set it equal to zero. Right? Any questions with that? All right. Uh, so now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same exact thing, but for the other loop. All right? So loop two. I start here. I go up across this 4 volt. I know I'm going up by 4 volts, so I write plus 4 volts. I get to this resistor. I know I'm dropping, right? I'm going from a higher voltage to a lower voltage. Uh, and I'm dropping by how much? I'm dropping by I2 times 1K, right? And then this resistor, same thing, same exact thing. I have I1 and I2 flowing through it, so I drop by the sum of those currents times 2K, and I set that equal to 0. So now when I have two equations and I have two unknowns, I have an equation for the first loop and I have an equation for the second loop and my unknowns are I1 and I2. So I basically have to solve this system of equations now uh, and I'll get you know, a value for I1, a value for I2, and then I can come in here, plug them in, find all the voltages. So this is what I was talking about when we did superposition, we first found the voltages and then we used the voltages to find the currents. When you're doing mesh, you first find the currents and then you use the currents to find the voltages. Right? Question? If the current were to flow the... Uh, no, so basically, um, anytime you're going across a resistor, it's dropping voltage. You're going to drop voltage. Um, it's going to drop... Uh, basically, you're always going to subtract when you're going across a resistor. What you have to pay attention to is the battery polarity. Uh, if you're going to add or subtract. Because if this battery was flipped, then I'd have to subtract 4 volts because I'm going in this direction, right? However, um, what you have to pay attention to is do these two currents sum when they come into this node or do they subtract when they come into this node? If they're traveling in opposite directions, you would go... So say you're doing this loop and I defined I2 in the opposite direction. What you'd have is minus... I1 minus I2 because the current flowing through here based on how I defined it would be I1 minus I2, right? The way that um, all the polarity ends up working out is that if we were wrong about the direction the current's flowing, we're going to get a negative current and then we're like, okay, so it's just flowing in the opposite direction. So if I go through all this algebra and I find I2 to be negative, then I know that the, the current I2 is actually flowing in the opposite direction, right? So the same thing we did earlier, but now it's flowing in the entire loop. Right. The only real difference is that the currents sum when they get to this, this junction because of KCL. So we can't do a simple KVL because we have these currents that add and then we need this algebra. So I'll go ahead and do the algebra. Let me uh, expand this out. So I get 3 volts minus I1 times 1K. Going to distribute minus I1 times 2K and then minus I2 times 2K. And then this one goes 4 volts minus I2 times 1K. Going to distribute again minus I1 times 2K minus I2 times 2K equals 0. And so now, you know, the fun part is you have to solve for I1 or I2 and then plug it into the other equation. 
So let me go ahead and do that in a different color. Okay, so let's group like terms. Um, it's, they're both the same, so it doesn't really matter. So let me just drop this equation one down here. So I've got three volts. Uh, I've got minus I1 times 1K, and I've got minus I1 times 2K. So if I group those, I get minus I1 times 3K, right? Everybody fine with that? So minus I1 times 3K, and then minus I2 times 2K equals zero. Um, I could solve for either I1 or I2. It really doesn't make a difference. Um, but basically, let me get three volts minus I1 times 3K equals I2 times 2K. I get that by adding this to both sides, right? And now I'm going to divide both sides by 2K, okay, to get I2 by itself. So divide by 2K, divide by 2K, those cancel, and I get I2 equals, and so, you know, algebraically I have to take the, the, top, the left side of the numerator divided by 2K minus the right side of the numerator divided by 2K. So 3 volts over 2K, that's going to give me a current, which is good because, you know, that's, we're trying to find a current. It gives me 1.5 milliamps. So 3 over 2K gave me 1.5 milliamps minus, and then I1 times 3K over 2K gives me basically 1.5 times I1. So that's just like a scalar for I1, right? It's whatever I1 is times 1.5. That's not 1.5 milliamps. Keep that in mind. Okay, so now I found I2. Kind of. I didn't find I2. I found an equation for I2 in terms of I1. And so now what I have to do is I have to take this I2, plug it into my other equation, my second equation, this equation, and then I will get an equation for I1 that's all in terms of I1. I can solve for I1 and then go backwards. So now you're seeing the nightmare of, K of mesh analysis. It's just a lot of algebra. And, you know, this is used to solve three-loop circuits. I told you guys my professor gave us a six-loop circuit. That's just mean. Uh, however, it works, so I have to teach it. So let's go four volts. Let me group like terms again. I've got four volts minus I2 times 1K minus I2 times 2K. So again, I2 times 3K and then minus I1 times 2K gives me zero. And so now I have to plug this whole thing in for I, I2, right? So four volts minus and then in brackets 1.5 milliamps minus 1.5 I1 times 3K minus I1 times 2K equals 0. Okay, so now we're going to distribute again. So 4 volts minus now 1.5 milliamps times 3K. That will get basically the K and the milli cancel, so I should get 4.5 volts. That's what that's going to give me. Okay, 3K times 1.5 milliamps. And now I have a minus and a minus, right? So that becomes a plus. And that's going to be 3K times 1.5 I1. So basically 4.5K times I1. And then minus I1 times 2K gives me 0. Uh, my 4 minus my 4.5 out here gives me a negative 0 0.5 volts. You really have to keep track of units when you do this, guys, because... You see I have currents floating around in here. I've got voltages. I've got resistances. You really have to keep track of your units. Otherwise, this is going to be a nightmare for you. So 4 minus 4.5 gives me negative 0 0.5 volts. And now I've got plus 4.5K times I1 minus 2K times I1. That's going to give me a plus 2.5K I1 equals 0. I can add this over to the other side, so I get 2.5K I1 equals 0 0.5 volts. And now I can divide both sides by 2.5K to finally get I1, which is 0.5 divided by 2500 gives me 0 0.2 milliamps. Okay, 
Great. So I found I1. Now I can find I2, right? Because I have I1. So I2 is 1.5 milliamps minus 1.5 times 0 0.2 milliamps. So I guess that would be 0 0.3 milliamps. So this whole thing should be 1.2. Is that right? Mathematically, 1.5 times 0.2 would give me 0.3. Let me just make sure. Okay, yeah, so 0.3, so this is 1.5 minus 0.3, so I2 should give me 1.2 milliamps. Okay, so that means that my current flowing through this 2K should be the sum of these two, right? Because of KCL. So that means that the current flowing through the 2K, if we wanted to call it I3 just for fun, I3 should be... 1.4 milliamps and if you guys remember from the superposition we solved this and we got 2.8 volts and 2.8 divided by 2k actually gives me 1.4 milliamps so that means that I didn't make any algebra mistakes <sighs> any questions about anything I did here because that's a whole lot of algebra and it's very easy to make an algebra mistake. I assure you some of these minus signs will get mixed up. Units will get mixed up. So you have to be very uh, careful when you do mesh analysis. We're going to cover it more next time. I'll go into, I mean, I don't know how much more algebra you guys like to see me do in here, but uh, I can do more examples next time. I just want to give you guys plenty of time to do the quiz today. Uh, it's not hard. I mean, you don't need plenty of time, but I want to give you plenty of time. Any questions about mesh, superposition, anything I did today? Does this make sense, mesh analysis? All right, sweet. Cool, all right, cool. Uh, we'll just cut the lecture a couple minutes short, and I'll give the quiz.